everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Katamita. I'm Yusuf. And I'm Zuby. And today we're going to be talking about some interesting stuff like mediumship, spirituality, Spiritual. yeah. the afterlife, stuff like that. We don't really have a, a set format, but we just wanted to chat about it and, yeah. and our interactions with those concepts these days. Yeah, so recently I, well, interestingly, I had borrowed a bunch of books from the library and one of them was a book called Option B. And I was just borrowing a bunch of different books that might be about loss or grief or whatever. And this book, I just thought it was very odd that I borrowed it. I don't know, a week or so ago and Mm -hmm. started reading it and I thought it was a good book. It's got some good I mean it's very one of those like you're gonna get through this and Mm -hmm. everything's gonna be okay and you'll come out stronger books and I was like okay maybe I can start to read a little bit of that now Mm -hmm. like maybe I'm at a place where (laughs) that doesn't make me want to vomit but um who's it by and like what's the general storyline so basically it's by this woman who lost her husband and she worked for Facebook her husband worked for SurveyMonkey, I think. Um, and then she had done this post uh, 30 days after he passed away. And it went really popular on Facebook. And she was also very good friends with this psychology professor. So the book is written by her and the psychology professor. Mm-hmm. So there's a mix of like her experience in her grief and loss. But also there is a component of here are some psychological skills and tools and some data and studies behind it as a whole and it's a good book I'm still reading it but what was odd is that I checked out this book Mm -hmm. last week or the week before and then something similar happened with somebody I know like Mm -hmm. the very specific situation that that book is about Mm mm-hmm and I just thought it was really weird. Like, this book came into my life. Right. Kind of serendipitous in a way. Yeah. And I'm probably reading too much into it, but I just thought it was interesting how that happened. And prior to that, I went down a rabbit hole, as I do, on watching Netflix and watching Tyler Henry's, okay. I think it's called Life After Death. Yeah, maybe? or... Um, and he is the cutest thing in the world. I just want to hug him and protect him. And he's just so adorable. He is an adorable little twink. <laughs> he's just cute. Anyways, um, and then I watched uh, the other Netflix series called Surviving Death, which um, one of the, there's like a book, and then they'd made this little limited series out of it. And it was very interesting because what we grew up with was a a certain point of view with our religious beliefs about the soul and death and Mm -hmm. all of this. And it's just really interesting to see how different people um, see things, believe things, where's the data, where's the science behind some of these other spiritual, energetic, consciousness, soul, spirit, ghost, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. um, what happens after we die. Definitely. I think there's... Kind of an interesting way in which um, Islam, which we were raised with, um, especially how we were raised with it, it was very like, there's God, mm-hmm. and like, that's it, you know, there's nothing, there's no other power, um, and when you die, you know, your soul rests until the day of judgment and then you go to heaven or you do your little purgatory sentence and then go to heaven um, and I mean, but there is talk of other beings. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Is there's yeah. there's not so much like we were definitely told like you know ghosts aren't real stuff like right. that. But do, angels, yeah, jinn, jinn, stuff like people, that. People, mm-hmm. the devil, mm-hmm. um, and Jesus, that, and that yeah, the prophets, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and whatnot. But that there is an afterlife, right? That there is a soul, and that will continue on. And that the afterlife will be much longer than your material life on this, you know, in in our physical being right now. Right. Um, And then that's the one that we should strive for 
because that's going to last a long time. <laughs> Definitely. But what we don't really talk so much about is like, you know, like our loved ones staying behind and, um, you know, their spirits moving amongst us and yeah, stuff like or that. Or reincarnation. Right. We don't talk about that. Uh, where some religions definitely, you know, wholly believe in that. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's kind of interesting to reconcile with these things we've been thinking so much about lately. Yeah. And how we kind of believe in them. Like, for example, while I might have struggled with religion as an institution, you know, and I still do for quite some time. I do still believe in, you know, spirituality and mm -hmm. like personal relationships with God and stuff like that. However, um, I don't know how to feel about this concept of the afterlife or mm. um, whether there is one. Like, I definitely think I have my little agnostic moments where I'm like, well, what if this is it? Like, what if you mm. die? And it's just Interesting. blackness and nothingness for the rest of eternity. And like, that is the what makes my stomach churn. Does that, yeah, I was going to ask, like, how does that make you feel? Definitely very existential crisis -y, <laughs> you know, very panicky. Yeah. So maybe um, it's like a coping, whether it's real or not, I definitely think it's something we, if it's not real, we probably made it up as a coping mechanism. Absolutely. Well, not just a coping mechanism. Like, think about religion as the institution. It, it, it's a way to keep people in check, right? Do this yeah. while you're alive. It's guidelines. Do this while you're alive or this potential of an afterlife. Consequence. You, you don't, you know, achieve in the same way. Yeah. And so it's it's definitely, it's a lot of things. It's a political thing. It's a you know, cultural thing. It's all these things besides maybe what it really is, which is just our souls experiencing the universe, you know, and, yeah. or maybe vice versa or whatever. Um, I think there's so many different thoughts on it. And it, it's just interesting to see how different people, including different mediums and the different methods of mediumship. Um, and so for those who don't know, mediums might be someone who is in the middle of somebody that can be earth side but that feels that they can communicate to those past this realm through different ways so that i'm not going to get into specifics of that you know clairvoyance clear whatever but there's a communication there that can go you know that they, that they can receive mm -hmm. um and then impart that message maybe definitely and i think the way we were raised is like engaging in any of that is kind of taboo taboo blasphemous, blasphemous maybe even yeah. and it's kind of like categorized as witchcraft or black yeah. magic and when in reality a lot of religions though sure. not just ours yeah sure whereas at, for us especially at this point in our lives we have to reconcile that with we're just looking for a connection. You know, we're looking yeah. for a connection to the world and the universe and maybe even our past loved ones and their spirits and their souls. And it's really hard sometimes to not feel guilty about, like, yeah. exploring these pathways yeah. and exploring my own spirituality. Because, I mean, that's what religion does, right? It guilts you. It's, it's guilt. Um, well, there's just, you know, a lot of indoctrination. And so through. going against guilt. that mm -hmm. is... It's hard if you're, you know, but I think it's interesting um, in looking at some of these shows and reading about it and whatnot, how different people are going through their journey and reconciling that as well. So maybe really strict Christians also have felt the same way and then they mm -hmm. meet a medium and and the medium is like, yeah, I'm spiritual and religious too. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's not like I, it goes against my religious beliefs. It's just... Um, that I have this ability or I've honed this ability. Um, and oftentimes what I found interesting is the common thread is that there is this spirit, soul, consciousness, energy, whatever you want to call it, that does continue on into something bigger than us. Mm -hmm. So, and that oftentimes the ego may go away and what's left is love or that the, that that soul has d done some work mm. journey you might call that purgatory mm. um or some people might call it incarnating you know some people might call it traveling through different lives and different experiences throughout the universe 
And I guess that's kind of what I struggle to understand is if if this is, you know, this soulful universal experience and like our human bodies and our human lives are one aspect of it, I guess I just struggle to, to I, cause I so want to believe, right? I, and I think that's it. So many of us want to believe there's an afterlife because it's scary to think that there's not. You know, mm-hmm. it's scary to think that we're, it's what, just going to be nothing. What makes you think that there's not? Uh, we don't have evidence. We don't have any scientific what would, evidence. What would be evidence? And do you think... That's a would, great question. And, I don't know. And would we understand How do we, that evidence? That's another question, too. Maybe, maybe we just don't fully comprehend the spiritual world around us, and so we perceive it. differently i mean to me like my personal opinion is that and that's why so much of religious text and things is explained a certain way is not to be taken literally but that in a way that we in our human brains can understand it Mm -hmm. because i don't know that we could understand the vastness Mm -hmm. unless you're on like a mushroom trip or something (laughs) like that (laughs) of the universe and the consciousness and the ego and all of that from, again, from what I've heard people go through, um, the sort of like oneness and love, I don't know that we, I don't know that I could get it, um, but that's what it seems like. I hear that sort of resonating mm. amongst a lot of people, that that stream of thought. Yeah, I don't know. definitely. I think going back to, to the question of why don't you believe there's an afterlife, I think it's just hard you know like our parents are gone and Mm -hmm. the only way we really see them again after that is through dreams you know and like we want to believe that there's these synchronicities and symbols around us and signs that it's them Mm -hmm. truly i i I believe it in the moment you know because that helps me get me through my day but then later you're like oh that was a coincidence i'm just looking right maybe that was just serendipitous or whatever it is and you know, like how do you measure a soul? How do you measure after your brain activity stops and your heart stops? How do you measure that transfer of so the soul? There is some, so not the transfer, mm-hmm. but when it comes to near death experiences, mm-hmm. there has been some data and studies on where there is zero brain activity, mm-hmm. but the person, the soul, consciousness, whatever, is outside of the physical body. Like out of body And they can relate things that nobody else would be able to. Like, for example, during a surgery, who was where mm-hmm. in relation to them? Hmm. And the tools they use, the words they use, the things they may have said. Like, there's no way they could have known this. Interesting. And then come back into their body because they're told to go back or whatever. Yeah. And they all have, like, most of them have very similar instances of, you know, light, other beings, Mm. and then being told to go back that it's not their time. Hmm. So there is some data and studies again how much do we want to open our mind to believing that or not believe that sure sure yeah it's just it's very interesting i would recommend watching the netflix series surviving death just to open your mind to it you don't have to believe it (laughs) none of that it's just interesting i think yeah definitely and i don't know i kind of want to circle back to how it's taboo to explore these things. And yeah. I think a lot of it is just um, how sociopolitically over time we've been um, indoctrinated to believe that, like, you know, this way of thinking is the correct one and all these other forms of spirituality and and religion or whatever you want to call it are inferior I think Um, also there's a lot of this idea that, like, your faith in God should be enough. mm. It should be enough. God is enough. Your faith should be enough to get you through. And if it's not, it just means you're weak. Right. It's something wrong with you. Definitely. Because we do have this. That's how I feel a little bit. I mean, because we have to fear God, right? Like, that's what we're taught. Fear God. And without that fear of God, you can't enter heaven because everything else is 
subsequent to that. Well, um, yeah. I mean, we fear God, but also God is very forgiving and loving and merciful for sure, and for all sure. of that, which I do believe. I do believe. Like today, I fa- uh, somebody sent me a text about our mom where they made this like award in her name mm-hmm. and I needed that so badly today like I yeah. really really needed that because I've just been like oh my god life sucks so hard like mm-hmm. it it's been really rough these past couple of days and you get Weeks, into months. it <laughs> yeah but for sure the past couple of days just because when you like for me, when things pile on top of each other, you're just like, how do I dig myself out right now? Mm. And I needed that. And God put that. Like, I think God gave me that mm-hmm. gift today so that I could just be like, oh, thank you so much. Like, yeah. thank you for giving me that light. I needed that light. Mm-hmm. Um, I I have a deep love and respect for God. And I don't. And that's just, that's me. You know, mm-hmm. that's just personally me. I think I have a good relationship with God. I don't necessarily need to go through other people, you know, right. to have my relationship with God. I've always had a strong belief and, and, and love of God, even through this. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think this is God's fault that my mom died. I think it's this man's fault that my mom died because mm-hmm. he chose not to so, call a taxi. So let me ask you, know? you how do you reconcile that with, free will? with... No, how do you reconcile that with... Um, your your, no, like your coworker or mommy's coworker sending you that message. You know, you you said like God gave you that, but well, like I think at God the same uses time, us as messengers, mm. God uses us. Okay, this is my opinion. <laughs> I think we are here on this earth, but we can absolutely be vehicles, vehicles for good, and that's what mm-hmm. I think we should be our sure. vehicles for good to do God's work. That is truly. Yeah what we should be doing instead of hurting people we should be helping people yeah and so i think that she was just being a messenger and doing good work mm -hmm. and they were doing good work that's how i see it that's how i I reconcile it it's kind of interesting hearing i don't expect to see god's hand come down and do something right like it's kind of funny to hear you phrase it that way because i think how i define my relationship with God is that especially with, you know, everything I've gone through as a person, you know, like with, with my identity and, you know, the isolation I went through for a while and all this stuff, you know, even the accident, everything is kind of like, I know I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. And like, if God's up there, you know, which I want to believe he is oftentimes. I mean, when, when, when we were going through this in the hospital and all that, I mean, I was praying, you know, I was praying like I was a little Muslim kid again, you yeah. know? And, um, I definitely, I do want to disclaim that I do identify as Muslim, especially in the socio-political sphere. You know, I'm always going to advocate for Muslims, um, when they're facing Islamophobia and stuff like that. But that's not to say that I... I think you would advocate for anybody that you feel is being wronged. Though, definitely, definitely. To be clear. I think I'm, you are pretty open-minded. Definitely. That I'm just saying when, when it comes to how I identify, a lot of people ask like, oh, well, or, or have said you're not really Muslim because yada yada. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or Or are you we Muslim? We could all be accused you know, of that, though. <laughs> definitely. And, and I think... For me, gossip about people, somebody could say you're not Muslim, you know. Definitely. And so I I find it interesting that you move in that way where it's like God is using me. Whereas for me, I see it as I, the individual, do good. And that count if there's a God, that counts counts for something. I think it's both. You know, okay. I think it's both. Absolutely. I Um, I think there's humility and understanding that God might be using me. Like Hmm. I need to be humble enough to be like, oh, this is not me doing this good thing. This is Mm. me just doing the good work of God. Okay, now how do you reconcile that with like your imposter syndrome? Or like you're never good enough. Me? Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm well, because, like generally. Yeah, right? like because be- I also well, in the same sentence would be like, oh, I didn't. It's not like I actually really did anything helpful or did anything really good. Like I'll always add that, mm. tack that on later mm. because I have lots of issues. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny how that works out, isn't it? It's like yeah. On one hand, it's we like we are taught though modesty and humility is huge in our religion though. For sure. Um, and even my mom taught that to us. She said. 
the house that you have, the money that you have, all of it could be gone in a day. Mm -hmm. And always be always be mindful that everything you have is because of God. Everything you have is because of God. Mm -hmm. And she taught me that and I try and that's where there is that like fear, mm -hmm. you know, that like just you think you worked so hard to get all of these things, but in a second God can take it mm -hmm. away. And uh, that's my belief, you know, that's what I was raised with and I choose to continue to believe that um, to, as a reminder to be grateful mm -hmm. for what you have. And yes, you do your part, you do your work, but ultimately yeah. God, you have it because of God. Yeah. What, what you I mean, have is because of even God. Even as the, like a not religious person, I do find it funny how you know, something good happens and I'm like, oh, thank God, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, ooh, or like, you know, I would say uh, now in my life, I, I, I will kind of say like, you know, thank the heavens, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, thank whoever's up there, whatever's yeah. up there, because I don't know, you know, yeah. and I, I do feel that with a lot of people, there's a trepidation and saying, you don't know, you're not sure, um, because nobody likes to be in limbo and nobody likes to feel that confusion so a lot of people are going to choose one or the other either I'd... well and people want black and white yes or no they Definitely. want clear guidelines which i think why a lot of religions you know especially islam says like these things are forbidden because mm. some people are stupid quite honestly <laughs> and they need that yeah. like they can't walk a gray line yeah because they don't have the intellect maybe yeah um well <laughs> you know i mean human beings are are different and not everybody can do critical thinking or you know some people want to be told what to do and for those people there are guidelines mm. but then there are people that are going to say oh i'd like to delve into this a little bit more i'd like to critically think about this i'd like to know about the why behind this mm -hmm. etc yeah. so i mean there's going to be like a plethora of people some people need structure and you some know. people need that and some people don't want that. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. they want to have the more philosophical conversations like one of our cousins. Mm -hmm. She's very intelligent and she could talk philosophically about things all day long. Mm. Um, and I love that. Like, I love talking with her about that because it's just it's always fun and interesting Definitely. you know to talk about and she's and she she's not just talking about it philosophically but also she's always got like references and, and yeah. things like that from yeah. islamic literature so i don't know i just i think it's really interesting I, I i have been having that feeling as i'm like watching these things and getting into it and listening to podcasts there is a part of me that's like oh my gosh am i committing a sin you know well, i was gonna say <laughs> i wonder if you find it harder than i do like because i kind of identify with yeah but that's with, also with having because I have some a lot of shame and like guilt sure i'm saying like i feel like i have experienced a level of like religious trauma, you know, mm -hmm. maybe more so than you or Asif, or maybe not, you know, maybe a different type, you know? Yeah. And so I wonder if it's easier for me to explore these, yeah. what we'll call non traditional forms yeah. of spirituality or whatever you want to call it, than, than for you, because you are still kind of okay with what you were raised with, you know? Not that I'm not, but. Yeah. You see, I it. haven't challenged it as much, or right. whereas been, I have like always been the rebel, and or like I guess I haven't had people turn on me, hmm. um, yet. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, know? I don't know, didn't we? I don't know. Well, anyways, uh, a lot of times we brush it off as oh, that's cultural, that's just. Cultural, but also you got to remember that just because one person is being ungodly in their actions, it doesn't mean it's the, the religion, religion, you know, it's and I think that's where it comes down to free will and being a godly person. You can act like you could have a high position and in any religious organization, but not be acting godly. Mm -hmm. um, but also, who am I to judge? Because none of us are perfect like we're all gonna have our problems i think the goal is is to for me anyways the goal is is to keep getting better mm -hmm. constantly improve and be a better person and love more and improve yourself in every possible way mm -hmm. and i think that that continues with our soul 
after this physical body dies mm. that we may still have some work to do learning and so that might look like different things for different people or different religions might call it different things but that it's not like i just think it would look differently for different people and honestly i will say that one of my maybe delusions is to make myself feel better when I often question God, like, why did my parents have to die so young? I'll tell myself, I'm like, I guess they just graduated early because they got enlightened quicker than other people. Mm. Like, they must have reached their journey and gotten to a place they that it takes... They learned what they could learn from here. Yeah, that it takes other people a hundred years that they got, to, that they got mm. done in half the time. Now, again, I'm going to... I can totally admit that that is completely <laughs> delusion, you know, like it's, 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 I'm making it up to make myself feel better. Yeah. But, you know, I, again, I'm biased. My, I loved my parents. I respected my parents and I think they were pretty amazing human beings. Definitely. Um, and a, I think a lot of people would agree. Um, they didn't cause fights and problems for people. They were generally peacemakers mm -hmm. and generally tried to help people. Um, and so, you know, it, 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 it tracks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well. So I'm curious, what would you say is your favorite or most interesting spiritual but not religious experience so far? Mm. Okay, well, not like most or best or any of that. Something recent is that, you know, as I was reading about like or hearing about signs, you know, because everybody will say butterflies, cardinals, birds, you know, mm -hmm. rainbows, like people very high, like highly identify with that as like, oh, that must be my loved one. And like, cool, that's great. If you mm -hmm. know, if that gives you peace and comfort. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's not true. Yeah. Um, but I was looking for something that I was like, what was something that would be like so specific for me and mommy? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say what it is, but there was a phrase, a joke that we had because between us that we would always be like well da, 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 da. and um and i don't know if you know it but i'll tell you afterwards <laughs> and i was like how but i was like what a super specific thing like this is not something you would just ever hear or read or any mm. of that so i'm listening to this podcast like maybe the same day i feel like it was the same day mm. and it was about like tyler henry was on the podcast and I had already thought about this thing mm. and twice the host says this thing in different words but the same concept hmm. of da 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 and I was like no way hmm. like again confirmation bias mm -hmm. you're looking for the things that you're looking for you buy a car and you see it everywhere like my brain is still sure. gonna not you know completely accept that yeah. but it was so weird because I'm like really that specific thing yeah um, I don't know. That is interesting. I, I, I like to pay attention to kind of the, like, you know, the little, the angel numbers, the small coincidences mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, I definitely, like, I remember when I had first moved up here and I was just chilling on the balcony for a minute at the house. And it was like one of the first times I felt like that the wind chime started chiming mm -hmm. and it was like just so different than any other time I'd heard it. I don't know how to explain it, but it yeah. literally, like, I don't know what I was doing, but I stopped, like, in my... Mm, you felt In what it. I was doing. I felt it, and I really... I can't explain it. I felt like it was my mom. Like, I felt yeah. like it was, like, her energy saying, oh, hey, you know, welcome back to the house. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and there was another time where it wasn't really a sign or a symbol or anything like that, but I... um. I don't know, I was just in bed one night, and I was really going through it. I was crying, you know, mm -hmm. and I was, I was crying out loud, boo-hoo, sobbing. And I was talking, too. I was talking to my parents out loud and just apologizing for whatever, you mm -hmm. know, voicing my regrets, um, all that kind of stuff. And I can't explain it, but I felt two very distinct spirits or whatever you want to call them feelings wash over me wow. and the first one was like a hug like from mommy like it felt like i could feel her hugging me almost and just like because i knew how she was you know she she <laughs> even though she thought i was ugly when i cried <laughs> she didn't like Stop. to see it you know like obviously no mom wants to see their child yeah. cry and so it was it i could feel the distinct 
forms of caring about me in a way. Like I could feel the first one was more of a hug and was like, come on, like you'll get through this, you know. Mm -hmm. And the second one I could tell was daddy's energy because Mm -hmm. it was a little sterner, Mm -hmm. you know, it like it was more like a hand on the it was exactly it was more of a hand on the shoulder. Like a calming. And it was like, you've been through this. You can get through this. Mm. And, you know, it was it was really interesting to me that obviously like I can't explain it and I it all sounds like mumbo jumbo hocus pocus. No, but that's actually one of the defining characteristics that people will say is that they can't really explain it. mm -hmm. But it is a feeling. Yeah. It that was is... weird that I could feel both presences because, you know, it, it's hard enough before this. It's hard enough for me to just connect with daddy. Yeah. You know, and so um, it was really nice feeling both energies one after the other. Like mm. it was distinct. It wasn't at the same time. Mm-hmm. And basically being able to hear their message through like this feeling that washed yeah. over me. And I think also... You're more open to that than I am. Mm. And I think that's part of it is that I think there is, again, from what I'm hearing and stuff, the themes is that you almost have to open yourself up a little bit more to these Mm -hmm. things if that's what you want. So Mm -hmm. if you want to be receiving this, you need to be more open to it. And I'm a giant scaredy cat. (laughs) So I'd probably like freak out (laughs) if something like that happened to me, which is why I think that wouldn't happen to me. Because I'm not open to inviting that in. Mm. Like, I am very scared of all of that. Mm. So I think there's some of that. And what's interesting is my mom, was she was very religious. Mm -hmm. She did her prayers. She had a deep, deep belief in God. Mm -hmm. And she had dreams that were very meaningful. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of them were a little clairvoyant Uh, yeah like a little premonition type (laughs) dreams i don't know what the white Mm -hmm. way to say it is but um with all of her children you know she had dreams about us uh before we came just i think that's really meaningful and Mm -hmm. and i think it's partly because she had such a deep connection with god and she was open to it Mm -hmm. i think that's a big part of it whereas like i know that i'm not open to (laughs) that kind of stuff but i have asked her to come into my dreams i'm like please come into my dreams Mm -hmm. and i was just talking recently like oh why is it she coming in my dreams and zach's like she's been in my dreams and i'm like (laughs) what and he's like yeah she said i love you and don't you worry Mm -hmm. and i was like what (laughs) yeah i mean if we're talking about the openness to it yeah i mean i i can agree also for sure and i think yeah i mean i do i do think that maybe you know these souls on the other side they understand us probably better than we understand ourselves you know especially when it's like the soul of your mom or your dad and they have a big picture look maybe yeah and i think it is almost like respecting our space giving us our time like i wonder if the reason mommy doesn't come to us so much in dreams or show herself so much through these all all these signs and symbols is because it might not be good for us to heal you know if we're still clinging yeah onto her presence here physically as opposed to yeah um you know celebrating her life and 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 we don't know her like soul. where her soul's journey is right now either mm. you know so like has she gotten to that side uh, or has she gotten closure mm. you know on, we haven't gotten closure right you know for lots of reasons but you know the, i don't know these are pick these are answers and questions that we don't know um yeah i mean some religious cleric could tell us and they're going to give us their, you know, take on it. And I respect that. That's what they believe. Yeah. Um, I do think, like, these are all normal questions, though, to have. Definitely. When you lose somebody, you know, that you love so much. Um, I think it's normal to have a little bit of question about some of that. Or at least want some type of reassurance that they're okay right there might be in another time and place and space but they're okay Mm. but i just thought it was interesting 
you know, going down a little bit of this rabbit hole of consciousness, life mm-hmm. after death, and... How we reconcile it with our religious and cultural upbringing. Yeah, and it's really interesting, you know, all the different religions and spirituality and theologies will have different variations on all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but more commonly than not, there is a thought that when your physical body is gone, that something still remains. Mm -hmm. Some type of consciousness Hmm. remains and becomes part of something bigger. Hmm. That does seem to be a recurring theme. Yeah. Well, if it's not God, hopefully one of these crazy millionaires comes up with a way to upload our consciousnesses into (laughs) a cloud or something. Well, I think that's what, like, some people really consider it as. Maybe. Is it's just exactly that. That it's like, that that's a good way to put it, that our little monkey brains can understand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. that was heavy, but <laughs> I think that's a good point to end this podcast on. Yeah. So join us next time. Let us know your thoughts. Definitely. You know, what were you raised with believing and what do you currently believe now how has that changed and why has that changed? Mm-hmm. And are you open to to thinking about it in a different way? Sure. And let us know if there's any other topics you want us to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Um, and we look forward to reading those comments and seeing you here next time on Katamita. Bye. 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 Mwah. <laughs>